All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to uh, the South Coast Food Town Hall. Um, we're happy you all joined us as um, SNAP benefits are about to be reduced. We're going to get more into that. And um, Starla Paris from DHS is going to kick us off. Starla has been with the uh, Oregon Department of Human Services for five years and has served as a family coach, the SNAP navigator, and is currently a community partnership coordinator for Coos and Curry counties. Outside of work, Starla enjoys time out in nature, photography, writing, and playing with her family and friends. It's all yours, Starla. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint. So thank you, everyone, and welcome to the South Coast Food Town Hall meeting. This is our first town hall meeting, but we are hoping that uh, this is a seed and that uh, we will have uh, a second annual food uh, town hall in, in Coos and Curry County. We're all here to learn tonight a little bit about food, where we can find it, what the nutritional value is in regards to um, our diet, in, in regards to our physical and mental health, as well as tips and tricks to learn how to expand your food budget. So first off, we do have SNAP. Uh, SNAP is a supplemental nutrition program and the supplemental is the part that I would like to focus on uh, because often, You'll hear people say, boy, you cannot eat with a family of four on $506 a month. But it's not meant to feed a family of four each month. It's meant to be a supplement. And so tonight we're going to talk about different ways that you can bring in food uh, to your household to expand your budget. Uh, next slide, please. This is a benefit program that is administered through the State of Oregon Self-Sufficiency uh, Program. Uh, but it is federally funded by the USDA. So we talk about SNAP allotments and you know, we hear about that, uh, but, but what is it? When, when COVID hit and there was not, uh, we didn't really know what was going on, did we? A lot of us here was like, what is this COVID? How is it impacting us? And it was just a snowball, um, so many flying pieces initially. Uh, but the USDA did uh, decide to have emergency allotments. And what that does is if someone's benefit amount, let's say their benefit amount is 300, uh, but they're eligible for 408, uh, they would get raised to that 408. When someone applies for SNAP benefits, there's a lot of variables that go into that. So one person may have rent and high rent, and one may not. Uh, one may have four people in their household, one may have eight. So all those variables come in and, and take that maximum allotment down. Uh, but under the emergency allotment, everybody's household was brought to the full amount. Uh, and so that emergency allotment has been tied to the state of emergency, both on a federal level and in the state of Oregon. And as COVID has uh, been moved to a part of our society that we can manage more effectively, those emergency, those emergency state of emergencies are ending. And in April, uh, the state of Oregon's did. And so we look at the emergency a lot and people ask me all the time, I'm in meetings all month long and, and people ask me, um, when is it gonna end? When is it gonna end? Because people's food budget will decrease. Uh, and what, what I can share is that we apply, the state of Oregon applies for that benefit every month about the middle of the month. And that towards the end of the month, we find out about the following month. And so we do know that we have emergency allotment for May. That request has gone up, I'm quite sure, because it's past the middle of the month. And we won't know for another week, week and a half about that. And so we don't know if emergency allotment is here in June. What we do know is if emergency allotment is denied, that we have a bumper month plugged in. And so if it's denied for June, the emergency allotment will be issued. Uh, and then in July, that will, there will be no emergency allotment. And so food benefits are gonna go down. Next slide, please. So at ODHS, if, if individuals are not on SNAP, there's no wrong door in the state of Oregon. So it used to be if you lived in Curry, you went over to the Gold Beach office or you went to the Brookings office and you applied for SNAP. But now the state of Oregon, for, for the last couple of years, there is no wrong door. You can go into any ODHS building, you can apply for SNAP in person, you can go online. Um, and I have listed, we'll provide these slides afterwards, but I, I have listed the four locations in Coos and Curry. Uh, we have one in North Bend, two in North Bend, excuse me, 
Gold Beach, and Brookings. Next slide, please. So an additional uh, benefit to the SNAP program is the employment and training. Anybody who's on SNAP can participate in employment and training in order to either secure employment in the workforce um, or increase, uh, go on, move on to another position, higher paying and help them to be more self-sufficient. Uh, we partner with, in, in our counties, we partner with WorkSource, we partner with Goodwill, and we partner with Southwestern Community College. And what that means is we don't actually run the programs that people get. Uh, if they want life skills, if they want training, if they want employment, we, we partner with people. So those who are on SNAP uh, will work with these agencies. But uh, one of the benefits too, in addition to employment and training is the support dollars. So let's say you are on SNAP and you have a job interview, but you don't really have interview clothing, we can help pay for that. Uh, let's say you're starting a new job and you haven't had a haircut in five years and you know everyone needs a haircut when they have a new job. We can pay for those type of things that help with employment. Uh, we also pay for transportation and, and um, excuse me, childcare uh, in, in benefit programs that we have. So there, SNAP does not just get your, get your money and run. There is opportunities for everyone to come and uh, participate at whatever level that they want. Next slide, please. So in, in, in each district, there is a SNAP navigator. Currently our SNAP navigator is Zach Richard, but he is out on leave. Um, and so you'll see down below that we have an email address just to go that, that comes in for Coos and Curry. Uh, there is myself and Kelsey Satella, we're community partnership coordinators, and either one of us can assist you um, with SNAP programs. So as I said earlier, the emergency allotment is something that's been going on since the beginning of COVID. And for about the last year, I've said in meetings, um, that it's going to end, what are we going to do? Because we're going to have a lot of Oregonians who, who knew when they signed up and when they were awarded SNAP, they knew what their benefit amount was and they knew what the difference was with the emergency allotment. But all of us, when we have a certain budget for our food and then it is dropped, it, it's an adjustment. And so I would say, hey, what are we going to do? I would say, hey, what are we going to do? And um, it was crickets, but about a month and a half ago, there was another person in a meeting who said, hey, I wanna to talk to you about that, which is Rosa, who is going to speak next. But Rosa and I met and we decided, you know what, let's start. Let's start talking about food. Let's start talking as a community uh, about the nutritional value for our physical health and our mental health. Let's start talking about ways that you can save money. So out of that, this was born. We, we, are gonna, we have a packed show today with uh, speakers. I doubt that we'll have time for questions and answers um, at the end, but if you uh, have registered, we will be sending out a survey by the end of the week. And we welcome any comments, any questions, any um, feedback, anybody who wants to join in on various aspects that we'll share tonight, please, uh, you are welcome to join us. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Darla. So next up, uh, we have Rosa and Christine from WIC. Rosa Atencioule is a Spanish-speaking certified health and wellness coach. She moved to the beautiful Oregon coast in 2003 from Panama and fell in love with the beautiful Oregon coast. She has provided nutrition education and counseling to Coos County families for over 16 years while working for Coos Health and Wellness as a WIC program, competent professional authority and manager, helping women and families achieve optimal nutrition needs and guiding them as they commit to lifelong health changes by creating healthy habits and achieving personal health goals. Her colleague, Christine Shepard, is an international board certified lactation consultant and manager of the WIC programs for both Josephine and Curry counties. Christine moved to Oregon in 2004 from South Africa to join her husband after she completed her postgraduate degree in dietetics. She has provided nutrition and specialized breastfeeding education to many families over seven, for over 17 years, helping women and families achieve optimal nutrition needs and guiding them as they commit to lifelong health changes 
by creating healthy habits and achieving personal health and breastfeeding goals. And Rosa, if before you start, you could remind people about the um, Spanish at the bottom of the screen, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Starla. Um, yes, uh, para las personas que hablan español, uh, si necesitas um, un traductor en español, puedes eh, darle click al botón de, que dice interpretación o intérprete y dale click al botón que dice español. Gracias. It's all yours, Rosa. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, I would like to start this presentation with a quote from John C. Maxwell. When you intentionally use your everyday life to bring about positive change in the life of others, you bring to you bring uh, you begin to um, live a life that matters. This quote resonates with me as Wick has been serving families for over 46 years providing nutritional education, healthy foods, breastfeeding support, and other services to, all, to every eligible family in Oregon. Uh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, Week services during COVID-19. Um, as we all know, it's been um, about two years since the pandemic started and all WIC clinics, clinics across Oregon are meeting our clients where they are providing services and support over the phone during this time of physical distancing with the goal to ensure optimal nutrition and lifelong health for every Oregon and, Oregon and family. Next slide. Do we lose Rosa? Um, can you go to the next? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Some of the services that uh, WIC provides is nutrition focused counseling tailored to the participants' needs. Um, so if they need a registered dietitian that can offer their services, especially to the high risk families, it's available to them for free. We offer breastfeeding support and also have the services of a lactation specialist who can answer any questions or any concerns or help with any concerns that breastfeeding moms may have. We offer healthy foods and community referrals. For instance, if, if a participant has a need for um, to apply for the OHP program, um, we connect them to the OHP assistant. If they need a appointment with um, a, a dental appointment, we also connect them with the Adventist Dental. And, and just like those two, we have connected families with many other uh, community um, resources. Next. Who is eligible for the WIC program? If you live in Oregon, if you are pregnant, a postpartum, or breastfeeding people, an infant or a child under the age of five. Also, if you are a grandparent, foster family, or a dad with a child under the age of five, you qualify for the book. If you, if a household, um, in, if your household income is less than or equal um, than um, equal of the income guidelines, you can qualify for WIC. Um, WIC participants are often co-enrolled in other WIC, in other programs like OHP, SNAP, and PAN that does not um, interfere with your eligibility to apply for WIC. Citizenship is not required to receive WIC services, so participation in WIC will not impact a participant's ability to receive other services or to attain citizenship which is not included in the updated public charge ruling. All WIC agencies offer bilingual services. This is our income eligibility uh, guidance that we use and it's updated every year. And um, one thing that uh, families uh, just have to take in consideration
consideration is that if they may not qualify monthly, they can qualify annually. So oftentimes participants use either their tax return or their W-2s for eligibility. Next. Which is in all counties. So we have 100 WIC clinic sites, 500 WIC food grocers take WIC benefits. So what happens at a WIC phone appointment? A WIC training staff offer personalized nutrition consultation with routine follow-ups. That means when a participant applies for the WIC program, we enroll them and um, they receive WIC benefits and they get an appointment for um, an appointment benefits for three months and an appointment um, three months uh, later for three months later. So we provide breastfeeding support and encouragement. So as I mentioned earlier, we offer the services of a lactation specialist to meet with all participants over the phone and offer breastfeeding support and guidance. It's offered uh, as a one-on-one -on -one during the pandemic and it's something that we will continue to offer. We connect participants to care beyond WIC if needed, meaning if a participant um, needs to be connected with a, um, let's say, a therapist. Uh, we also can connect them and, and help them schedule an appointment for that. Um, participants get set up with a card um, to buy WIC food. So it used to be years um, ago that we offer vouchers, but we no longer offer vouchers. We offer a e-WIC card that participants use as a debit card to buy their WIC benefits. It has helped um, tremendously with um, the time and the way that participants do their grocery shopping at the store. So nutrition education is the cornerstone of weight. So we do talk about a lot of nutrition, um, about fruits and vegetables and what, um, you know, it's the recommended amount or intake amount for fruit and vegetables and other foods. Next slide. And I'm gonna um, pass it over to Christine from now on. All right, thanks Rosa. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, nutrition education is the cornerstone of our program and it sets us apart from any other food supplemental program. And so um, we visit with our families quarterly. So we have to see them twice um, for quote unquote, uh, enrollment processes. And then in those interim, those other two appointments, we can offer these online classes to folks. So it, it really just helps folks be able to meet the requirements for the program from the comfort of their home. Thanks, next slide. Um, like Rosa mentioned, WIC offers um, the food benefits on an electronic card. Um, and our average food value is approximately $50 per participant. So if a, if a pregnant mom and her one-year-old were enrolled in WIC, they would get around $100 worth of food per month. And then we cover um, a lot of the basics. So we hit all of the, it's a prescribed food list. And so there's um, food from every single food group. And then during the pandemic, the American Rescue Plan Act increased our food and vegetable allotment benefits. Um, and those have been extended through September of 2020. So in a not, without this increase, uh, families were getting, the kids were getting $9 per month for fresh frozen or canned fruits and vegetables, and the pregnant women and breastfeeding moms were getting $11. With this bump, um, as you can see now, the, the kids are getting $24 for fresh fruits and vegetables. And then if you were fully or partially breastfeeding, then those moms get 47. Um, so it's, it's a significant bump and it's made a huge um, impact in our families' lives during this time. Thank you, next slide. Um, we've also tried to make food shopping very easy and yeah, that was the biggest thing that came from those vouchers was the, um, the burden on our families. And so we've tried to really streamline it. So Oregon was one of the first states to, to um, really introduce these debit cards. It's an EBT card. We load everything onto their cards. And so if there's any outages, folks, can, we can load 
um, remotely. So I think during COVID, we were really set up for success with this um, so that we could kind of seamlessly go through with a phone appointment. And so that helped me specifically for us here in Curry County um, and Josephine County, where we're based in Josephine and I come out uh, to Curry County often, but most of those appointments are over the phone and we're able to uh, provide the benefits um, remotely. We also have this really cool uh, phone app that clients are um, able to use and download. It then uh, links to your card and it gives you real time information for what's, what's left on your card for the month. Um, for those benefits. Unlike SNAP, ours don't roll over. So whatever gets issued this month needs to be used this month. And so this has been a really handy tool. We have these barcode functions where it links in with your camera. It allows folks to be able to scan items in the store to make sure that they are purchasing the correct food. So then we're not holding up lines. We're also not um, you know, having clients feel embarrassed for getting the wrong foods and then holding up things. Um, it's got Lovely access to um, some yummy recipes through Food Hero, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, also at some point. There's a link to um, the online education as well. So uh, really, really cool uh, integration there. Next slide, please. During the summertime, um, oh, and then you can hit uh, so that we can get, thank you. Uh, during the summertime, we also are part of the Farm Direct Nutrition Program, which provides additional um, food benefits or dollar benefits to, to eligible families to use exclusively at the local farmer's market. So it's really bringing in extra dollars to the local uh, vendors and then also keeping those dollars in the area. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then each eligible person is able to get $28 per um, summertime. So that's in addition to these extra dollars uh, that they receive. So we um, families are able to get these uh, up to five per family, and then they're good through from June through the end of November. So we, um, we like to encourage folks to get a variety of in-season produce. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, and then it should be fairly easy. A fast way to connect with us is to go onto our Oregon WIC website. There is an interest form there. You can just click on that. It will ask for your name, your contact information, um, and you could put in your first name and your phone number, and then um, the county that you're interested or your zip code. And then that goes to the state, and then they will actually send it out to uh, local offices, and we will contact you directly. From there. So it should be fairly streamlined to get to us and we typically get to everybody within two business days. Thank you. Next slide. There are a few myths and I'm just going to touch on a few, but um, like uh, Rosa mentioned earlier, you can be adjunctly qu uh, qualified for a program by just receiving OHP already. If you already received SNAP or TANF, you're automatically eligible for our program you can receive all of those benefits together. So you don't have to choose between one or the other. Okay, thank you, next slide. There's a lot on that slide. Um, and then this is, these are some resources. There's our um, address to the WIC homepage. We've got that two-on-one information line. Uh, we've linked the two um, web pages to get a hold of us at the WIC office. But what I will do is I've got two tiny URLs that I'll drop in the chat. For folks, one is in Spanish, one is in English, um, and that will get you a very comprehensive list of how to contact us and any other information. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Christine and Rosa. Hold on, bear with me. Okay, all right. Next up, we have Courtney Deschler from South Coast Food Share. Courtney is the Compliance and Program Manager for South Coast Food Share. Over the last six years, she has worked in all aspects of pertaining to food banking in the Coos and Curry County communities. She began as a truck driver and eventually came to managing the program. She is a proud wife and mother of two, three here soon enough, she says, and was born and raised in Coos County, Oregon. It is there that she will consider home. If you have any questions pertaining to South Coast Food Share, you can email Courtney at cdeschler at yahoo.com. Courtney, it's all yours. I'm gonna give this a try. I've been told that my internet is unstable by my 
a computer and therefore I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do this or not. So I'm just going to keep talking right and hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So South Coast Food Share has been in operation since 1965. Uh, we are a part of the largest public nonprofit and the largest public uh, nonprofit food and nutritional resource. Each year we distribute millions of pounds of food through our network of partner agencies that include the ones that you see on the slide, which is the food pantries, congregate meal sites, and other supplemental programs. Our biggest mission is that we keep our communities fed and we want to be able to spread all of the news that our partners are ready to support all of these people who may suddenly begin to struggle as a result of a drop of this supplemental income for food, whether or not they have uh, received a, a actual income loss or just SNAP benefits loss or any other kind of loss, they're welcome to come to one of our 15 pantries at any point in time and be able to access services. What you would need in order to access services is simply to show up at one of the locations and to say that you need food. Uh, we don't have any kind of requirement you don't have to provide proof of identity, uh, of housing status, of income. You are asked to sign a self-attesting statement that you do fall within the income guidelines set forth by the federal government, which is 300% of the federal poverty level, which at this point in time, 97% of Coos and Curry County fall under. So it's a very, very gracious uh, income limit for receiving services. Our pantry trees will provide a minimum of three to five days worth of food during any one visit, although most of them are able to provide far more than that. They are able to provide everything from shelf stable products to perishables such as produce, milk, dairy, and frozen meats. And they will do their absolute best to cater to specific nutritional needs. So just make sure that you have told somebody up front that you know i have uh, dental issues or i have diabetes or high blood pressure so i need to focus on low sodium foods and they will do their best to be able to find foods within the pantry that are going to fit those nutritional needs uh, on this site or on this page here you'll see that there is a food resource guide available it is always readily updated at www.orcca.us you will click on the tab for services and then the tab for South Coast Food Share, and that will get you to this link. A lot of our partners will have printouts of this available as well as we have printouts of it available at 225 Leclerc in Coos Bay, which is a little bit behind Walmart and Staples, right next to where Oregon Coast Community Action is. If you want to have a paper one handed to you, we can do that. But otherwise, we keep that website up to date with the most accurate information on where you can get food. Awesome. Um, Thank you, Courtney. That's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> and uh, and we do have referrals for the food share at the Coos Bay Library. So if you drop by the Coos Bay Library, we can fill out the form there and you can just take it into food share and get your food. Um, was that, did you have anything else to add, Courtney? Sure, I'll talk about the Fresh Choice Market for a second. Paul is right. If you guys would like to have any community or instantaneous access, to some perishable products, namely fruits, vegetables, and some dairy. Uh, you can go to a number of sites, but the Coos Bay Library is one of those sites where they can help you fill out a referral form, which you can bring to 225 Leclerc, where we have a fresh choice market set up four days a week, Monday through Thursday, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Please ring the doorbell on the exterior of the building and be patient and wait for somebody to come from the warehouse to assist you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. All right. All right. All right. So next up, we have Adam Rea. Adam has been with the Department of Human Services for 15 years and has been coordinator of Oregon's SNAP-Ed pro program for about four years. 
When not working on nutrition education, he likes to go on walks with his four-legged friends. Who doesn't? It's all yours, Adam. Got to undo all of the mutes. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm Adam from Department of Human Services, and I want to give you uh, kind of a high-level overview of the SNAP Ed program. Uh, next slide. So a real quick kind of bird's eye view of the program. Um, SNAP Ed has actually been around since 1992. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary. How exciting! Um, you know, in the 15 years I've been with DHS, I was aware of SNAP-Ed for the last four of them. Um, <laughs> we don't do a great job of advertising our own um, services. So this is something that, that has been around and we're trying to get it out there and have folks know that this is a resource. The intent of the SNAP-Ed program is to provide nutrition education to um, SNAP recipients and those eligible for SNAP and increase the likelihood that those folks will make healthy food choices within a limited budget and choose physically active lifestyles. You know, you can see the fancy language they're taking from the USDA. Consistent with the dietary guidelines for Americans. Um, basically, we just try to do what we can to, to find ways for you to be healthy in your regular everyday life because we know that life is pretty busy. We work with um, individual communities. There's not a one size fits all kind of curriculum. So we're working with schools and tribal councils, WIC. Um, we're, we're all over the place. <clears throat> Next slide. So this is just a real quick map of Oregon. We are, we do have SNAP, SNAP Ed available in every county in the state. Most counties are their own unit, but there's some combo counties you can see there. Um, while Department of Human Services directs the program okay. and funds it, it is administered by the Oregon State University Extension Service. So OSU Extension Service folks are the ones who are teaching the classes. They're, they're developing, developing the recipes. They're getting people. Um, they're interacting with people. I sit in my little cubicle all by myself and don't get to talk to anybody. So this is exciting. <laughs> Uh, next slide, please. So we focus on getting healthy information or information about healthy stuff out to folks. Uh, we have a number of different ways that we do it. Um, we've done cooking classes and cooking demonstrations. Um, this is, you know, prior to the pandemic, we would um, be able to have uh, food demonstrations in DHS offices, in the lobbies. Um, it's been quite a while since we've been able to do that, but we're trying to roll that out some more. Um, there's this Growing Healthy Kids curriculum, which was developed, um, I believe is de developed here in Oregon, go Oregon. Um, and it's basically teaching young kids how to grow food and kind of going through the whole like uh, farm to table process, it's cool. Grow This um, was a seed challenge that was statewide. Um, we're in our third year of it now, and it was free to participate. You sign up and say, hey, I want some seeds, and we send you some seeds. And there's um, cohorts, so you can like see how other people's plantings are growing. Um, there's tips with master gardeners um, who work for the um, university. It's really great. And this is our third year. We sent out 300,000 packets of seeds this year, all of them donated by MyMart. Um, and OSU Extension Service did all of the sorting of those seeds, and we very much appreciate it. It's a lot of seeds. Next slide, please. Okay, so the Plan, Shop, Save, and Cook is a specific curriculum. Um, that this one's actually offered down in Coos and Curry counties. And it is pretty much exactly what it says it is. It's, we're going to help you uh, learn some strategies on how to plan out your meals, um, how to shop efficiently and within a budget, and how to cook all that stuff. Um, you know, all the greatest ingredients in the world don't mean anything if you don't know how to put them all together, right? Um, so what happens in this plan, shop, save, cook is they'll actually, um, our um, educators will actually go out to grocery stores with participants and like, we'll walk the aisles and like, hey, look, look at this deal versus, versus this deal. What makes this better than this? And actually go through, this is how you break down a cost by weight. This is why just because this says 10% off doesn't mean it's 
better than this. Um, it's really kind of like from start to end, yeah. like the whole cooking process. It's great. Um, I think that it has been around for quite a while. Um, I think in Coos County, it's offered through the Waterfall Community Health Center. And I think it's available at ARC, at the uh, At-Risk Kids Project. Um, there are, I've been told there's plans to provide some of these classes at the Coos Bay Farmer's Market later this year um, and potentially at the Bandon Community Youth Center. So we will see if that happens. Hopefully it does. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, so in addition to nutritional health, SNAP-Ed uh, wants to focus on physical health as well. Um, the Walk With Ease curriculum is one that um, you have yeah. over there in Coos and Curry counties. Um, it was developed by the Arthritis Foundation primarily as a way to help older adults or people with joint pain um, stay physically active uh, while dealing with that pain. Because, you know, when it hurts, you don't feel like doing stuff, right? So this uh, Walk With Ease program was developed for, for that audience. However, anybody can participate in this, um, you know, through Oregon Snap Ed, we, um, we can get together cohorts of people. And during the pandemic, mostly it was like virtual walking groups. So people would check in with each other. Um, but now people are starting to get back in person. I've been to a few um, Snap Ed units around the state and seen where Walk With Ease classes have started as like, okay, we're gonna do some sessions. And at the end of five weeks or whatever, it's done but they, they still don't. want to keep walking because they made these relationships with each other. It kind of goes from like, oh, this is healthy to like, oh, this is a fun thing to do, um, which is really cool. And I'm a really cynical person. So you can believe me that, <laughs> that this is really cool. Um, the information on this slide is from the official Arthritis Foundation site, you know, the 18 sessions of 45 to 60 minutes. That may not necessarily be what we offer through snap -Ed. That's a lot of sessions. Um, but again, we're trying, we try to tailor things to what the folks we're working with actually want. Uh, next slide, please. So Food Hero, I think one of the previous um, speakers mentioned Food Hero. And Food Hero is essentially the face of Oregon Snap Ed. It's our, it's our branding, it's our social marketing. Our foodhero.org website is the main landing page for recipes, videos, all that good stuff. Um, it can connect you with some of the other things I talked about, like the Grow This program with the seeds. Um, so it's like your one-stop shop. There's stuff in there like kid-tested recipes where they've experimented with these recipes on kids <laughs> and they're not kid approved unless 70% of the kids liked them. So, you know, this is stuff that if you got kind of picky eaters, even if they're not kids, they're kind of picky eaters, you can start there. Um, we have ways to filter recipes by cooking method. If you don't have a stove top and you can only have a microwave to cook with, boom, we can filter that for you. Uh, you want a one pot meal? Boom, we got that. Five, Five ingredients or less? Boom, we got that. I'm trying to make things as accessible and as easy as possible to eat, eat right. Um, one of the what other things think? that Food Hero does in addition to all that educational stuff is we have free stuff, which is great. Um, we have given away in the past, we've had um, those reusable shopping bags. You can see um, one of the recent ones there, the spinach one. Um, we've made recipe books that are free and there's a, a picture of it there it's like a full it's like a bound recipe book it's a real book um and which is surprising considering we're a government agency nothing we ever give out is really fun and bright so this stuff is really cool um we've given away cutting boards uh, measuring cups one thing that we've done is like spatulas you'd be surprised how many folks just don't have a spatula and it is a very crucial utensil for cooking so if we can kind of, if we can provide something that just this little thing can lift a bunch of barriers for folks, then hey, let's do that. And so we have lots of good reinforcements to provide to folks. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here's a couple of posts from the Food Hero Facebook page. Um, Food Hero is on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. 
Um, you can see that one pot meal there, the skillet and the skillet lasagna. Um, and then on the right there, you have the pile of seeds that we got from Bimart for the Grow This program. Um, Facebook and the other social media pages are updated daily with food hero tips and tricks and updates to classes, all that good stuff. Uh, next slide. What do you get when you cross a dog with a daisy? You get a cauliflower. This is the kind of humor that you can expect. <laughs> so if you don't love dad jokes, uh, you know, you have to deal with it. These are aimed at kids though, so. <laughs> That was uh, pretty good. <laughs> uh, next slide. So just to kind of sum up, SnapEd is it's there to help you make the most of the resources that you have. Um, these recipes are developed by registered dietitians at Oregon State University. It's not just me making this stuff up. I'm pretty sure no one wants my plain noodles with tuna fish recipe. <laughs> so these folks have actually developed things that are nutritionally wholesome and easy to cook. They even have recipes in there that are scaled. Um, so you can cook for large groups. They have recipes that are accredited so they can be um, cooked and provided by like childcare providers. It's awesome. Um, I think on our last slide there, there we go. Um, we have foodhero.org is our main landing page. Um, if you want to know more about, oh, there's a link right there in the chat. If you want to know more about um, classes in the area, you can reach out um, to food.hero at oregonstate.edu. Um, or you can connect directly with um, me or my um, counterpart, Lucy. Um, we both help run this thing called SnapBed. So thank you. Thanks, Adam. Sorry about the slides there at the end. <laughs> no problem no problem i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the share for a second um we're gonna have a brief uh video intermission here but before we go into the video i'm gonna introduce the maker of the video who is uh stephanie polizzi from the um, oregon state university extension stephanie's an associate professor of practice at the osu extension family and community health for Coos and Curry. She has a master's in public health. She's a registered dietitian nutritionist, um, certified in lifestyle medicine. She's also certi a certified health education specialist, a certified health and wellness coach, and a fellow of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And she's also the chair of our local Coos um, County Food and Nutrition Group and the co-chair of our new The Beat Food Systems Consortium. Stephanie, do you want to say anything about the video before I share it? Uh, I would say be kind since it was my first attempt at um, trying to make a video. Okay. We will try to be kind. Oh, hold on. There we go. Hi, registered dietitian Steph Polizzi here with an easy tip for adding more beans and lentils to your diet. White beans make a great thickener for soups like corn chowder. Start with two cans of white beans. Low or no sodium is best. Pour the beans, liquid and all, into the blender. The liquid has lots of extra soluble fiber. Then puree. It only takes a couple seconds. Pour the pureed beans into your potato soup or corn chowder. Add more beans if you like it thicker. Then just stir to heat it up and it's ready to serve. Or try adding one cup red lentils, which actually look orange, to soup broth. They cook in 10 to 15 minutes and dissolve completely leaving no trace of the lentil, but thicken your broth beautifully. Use with this sweet potato soup, tomato-based soups, or sneak them into marinara sauce for some extra nutrition. 
And that's your legume tip from Easy Peasy by Pleasy. And, <laughs> and you all can find more recipes like that on the Food and Nutrition Group page on the Coos Head um, Food Co-op website. There, there's plenty other um, short, healthy recipes on there to check out. Now we're going to go back to the slideshow here. You keep hitting from the beginning instead of starting it from the slide you want. I know, I'm, I'm doing all kinds of messing up stuff. <laughs> that, when I, things are just being weird, but there, there you, you go. go. All right, it's up to me now, huh? It's all yours. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about what the OSU Extension has to offer. And as uh, Paul mentioned, I cover both Coos and Curry counties. Oops, go ahead. I keep trying to click it myself, I'm sorry. Please forward. So um, my perspective is that uh, I'm a, since I'm a registered dietitian, it's really important for me to help teach people to understand that food really is medicine. It's not just some cliche. We know that food makes up every cell of your body and your cells are not gonna work right if you don't give it the right food. And we also know that only diet has been clinically proven to reverse today's chronic diseases like heart disease and diabetes. So it's important that we focus on in, in aspects of our fruits, vegetables, and other plant foods because those provide things that prevent chronic disease. And the main components of those foods are really um, phytonutrients and antioxidants. But the problem is people aren't eating them. They're not getting their minimum of five fruits and vegetables a day. As a matter of fact, less than 15% of our residents are according to our community health assessment. And the optimal is more than that, quite a bit more than that, nine to 11 plus servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And people always tell me, well, they cost too much. That's their first reason. Some people say, well, they don't have access. Some people lack the cooking skills. They don't know what to do with a can of beans. Um, and most importantly, I think people don't believe that nutrition is important. And I think a lot of that is because their physicians don't tell them that nutrition is important. The government isn't really supporting this idea. And so it's up to me. And so this, this town hall is really to help come up with solutions to solve these problems, the high cost, the limited access, and even things like the lack of cooking skills. But I'm here to help you believe that nutrition is important. So first step, if, you're, if you think fruits and vegetables are too expensive, I suggest you give this a try. Eliminate the soda, the candy, the snack foods, the foods high in salt, sugar, and fat, pastries, meat, fish, poultry, and dairy products from your grocery bill. And let's see how much money you save. And then spend that money on fruits, vegetables, and uh, other plant foods. And it's even easier to grow some of these foods and save money there as well. Next slide. So I want to say that the first thing you should really try and focus on is legumes. There are several reasons to focus on beans. Um, number one, they are the key to the longevity diet. And the longevity diet means people live to be over 100 years old with no disability. In other words, they're healthy. So adding beans to your diet is very, very important. But the other solution to one of the problems is that beans are extremely inexpensive really inexpensive, particularly if you buy dried beans and cook them at home. But if you don't have the cooking utensils, you can buy canned beans and you can eat them right out of the can. They can be used hot or cold. So the best practice is to replace your meats and meat products with legumes. And that gives you the protein that you need without the saturated fat or cholesterol. The next focus should really be on cruciferous vegetables. Members of the cruciferous family include broccoli and cauliflower and all these other things listed on the slide, kale, bok choy, radishes, turnips. There are compounds in cruciferous vegetables that are particularly protective against cancer. 
And you may not realize it, but cancer is the number one cause of death in Coos and Curry counties. So we really want to try and prevent this. So we want to have those cruciferous every single day. I recommend one cup cooked or a half a cup raw of at least one type of cruciferous vegetable every day. And the best thing about these vegetables is that they, they grow really well in container gardens. I also recommend dark green leafy vegetables. Not only do they fight inflammation associated with aging and disease, they have a lot of B vitamins and plenty of antioxidants like beta carotene and vitamin C. And most importantly, these dark green leafies provide a compound that helps your body make nitric oxide. And that may sound like something you don't want to make, but the fact is you do want to make nitric oxide because nitric oxide is a natural vasodilator. It widens your arteries, lowers your blood pressure, improves blood flow so that you can get the oxygen and the nutrients to all the working organs and muscles. So Creating nitric oxide on a daily basis is a really good thing, protects against heart disease and diabetes, and uh, also uh, inflammation like autoimmune disease. So in order to make nitric oxide, you have to chew your greens and they have to be raw. So I recommend as a best practice to have a fresh salad every day. Now you can cook some greens and you can put some in your smoothies, but you won't make that nitric oxide. So you want a little bit of both. Make sure you get that raw salad every day. If you wanna save your brain, I recommend berries because berries are associated with reduced risk of Alzheimer's and other form of dementia. So it's really good about berries is that you can get them fresh or frozen and they're just as good and all the nutrients are contained within. But also berries grow really well here on the coast. So you can basically glean berries down 101. If you can get there and you got a pair of gloves, you can pick blackberries. They're sweet and delicious, so kids love them and they make a great dessert. One of the things that all of these plant foods have in common is they all contain dietary fiber. And fiber is protective against just about every chronic disease that we have, particularly things like colon cancer, diabetes and heart disease, inflammation, autoimmune disease, even osteoporosis. There are some uh, research studies that show that fiber is really protective. So there's two kinds of fiber, insoluble fiber, which protects against constipation, diverticulosis, hemorrhoids, colon ca colorectal cancer, and soluble fiber, which lowers blood sugars and cholesterol. So really good for both heart disease and diabetes. The other thing is our healthy gut bacteria, which really protect our immunity. Um, they love soluble fiber. So foods high in soluble fiber are, include legumes, which is the cornerstone of a healthy diet. Also things like oats and barley and the skins of fruit and flax and chia seeds are good sources of soluble fiber. Now we don't have a very large minimum requirement, 25 to 38 grams per day, but that's not optimal. We should really be trying to get 40 to 60 grams of fiber per day. So the best practice is to fill your plate with fruits and vegetables and beans intact grains, and then sprinkle with a little bit of nuts and seeds. And all of this information really comes to you through the Family and Community Health Program area of Extension. So we have six program areas in Extension. Most people know 4-H. You may know that we have an agriculture a, a faculty and a forestry, C grant. We have a tourism and business development program area. And then we have Family and Community Health, which used to be called Home Act. And within that, under that umbrella, we have three sections. One is SNAP education that we were just learning about. Allison Harris is our chair or our coordinator, and then we have program assistants. Then you have me, I teach disease prevention, and we also have the volunteer coordinator that focuses on the Master Food Preserver Program. Paul? Great, thanks, Steph. <laughs> keep going, keep going, I got more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the last one. Go there ahead. We go. So <laughs> when we're talking about SNAP Ed, as we already learned, it's a federally funded program. It delivers nutrition, education, and obesity prevention, and it works in several partnerships. Next slide. These are the partnerships that Allison's been working with. K through 12 schools. They mentioned ARC, the Boys and Girls Club, Coos Bay's Farmers Market, 
waterfall and coast community health centers, the food banks, Coquille tribes, and summer school and after school programs. So they're, they're involved in a lot. The Master Food Preservers, um, organized by Sam, they provide monthly workshops on how to preserve your food. So it's really um, a low cost option for gleaning foods and then canning it and having it later. And Sam also happens to coordinate the Master Gardener program, which is not related to family and community health. It's under the agriculture program area, but they do a lot with food and they can help you learn how to grow food in your own backyard. They're both present at the, uh, the Coos Bay Farmer's Market. And then you have me. I provide classes and seminars and webinars and courses, even to have done some cooking demos and support the lifestyle medicine program like CHIP. I provide uh, certified medical education units for health professionals at the hospitals. And um, I can also work on a, many committees and coalitions trying to keep um, healthy nutrition at, at the table. These are the resources that we create all the time. You should be well aware of these. I create handouts that you can um, share with your patients or clients and uh, with your family. The Healthy Bites Initiative is a monthly food that we highlight. It's got posters and handouts and recipes. And the Nutrition Resource Guide, which is a 52 page booklet shows you where to find food, also how to cook food. It's got a whole bunch of online resources. You can watch many of my uh, nutrition webinars that are archived on the Coos County Family and Community Health website. And then we can also share the, um, like the easy peasy, by easy, the other videos and things like that that are created by the OHSU Campus for Rural Health and some dietetic interns that are housed on the Food and Nutrition Group uh, page, which is uh, on the Coos Head Food Co-op website. And you can also get archived, um, I think we have like 50 or 52 different foods from the Healthy Bites that is archived on the Advanced Health website. One more. There we go. Upcoming workshops. If you're interested, the Master Food Preservers are having their jams and jellies class, their pickling in June, and their dehydration and freezing in July. Upcoming classes for me, I have the Alzheimer's Walk coming up in June, so I'm teaching the Arresting Alzheimer's class twice, once in May and once in June, once in Coos Bay, once in Bandon. And I'm also teaching longevity and health and the fire within in Coquille, which is about um, inflammation, reducing inflammation. If you'd like to get the flyers and you're not already, then just send me an email and I'll put you on my list, sir. One more, Paul. Here's the contact information for Allison, who is the coordinator for SNAP-Ed, Nicole, who's in Coos County, and Linka, Linda Pink, Pinkham, who is in Curry County as a SNAP-Ed coordinator or a program assistant. Sam is the master food, master gardener coordinator. And then you have my email. And you can also call the office if you're not comfortable using email and they can put you in touch with us. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Steph. And, uh, and we do have free copies of the physical nutrition resource guide at the Coos Bay Public Library. You can pick them up right across from the reference desk. All right. Next up, we have um, Nicole Norris from the Waterfall uh, Community Health Center. Nicole Norris is an MA and THW, which stands for a traditional health worker at Waterfall um, Community Health Center, where she develops programs to reduce social health barriers in Coos County communities. She was a part-time anthropology instructor walk from 2005 to 2021, and prior to that, a tribal archeologist for the Coquel Indian tribe. She finds the unique beauty of the landscape features in our local area interwoven with the rich human history invigorating and is happy to call the South Coast home. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nicole. And Nicole is gonna do a recognition for us. We probably should have done it at the beginning. So thank you so much, Nicole. 
Yes, thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak really quickly about our local Native nations. Um, the South Coast Food Town Hall group would like to recognize that we are holding tonight's town hall in the ancestral homelands of four federally recognized Indian tribes. Uh, we have two groups of tribal peoples loca located locally, the Confederated Tribes of the Kuslo Umqua and Sayusla, as well as the Kokwa Indian tribe. Uh, we would also like to recognize two other tribes who historically shared these lands, uh, the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz on the Northern Oregon coast and the Tolua Diné in Northern California. Um, the act of, of building community through food, hunting, gathering, fishing, cooking together, eating together is a very important aspect of all Native cultures around the world, not just Native American cultures. Uh, and giving back to the community through food is a longstanding tradition that links modern peoples with their ancestors and cultures. Um, and in fact, the program I'm going to speak to you about tonight, the VeggieRx program at Waterfall, um, has gotten some of its funding this year through grants through the Confederated Tribes of the Kuslo Umquasayusla, as well as the Cocoa Indian Tribe uh, Potlatch Fund. So thank you again for letting me recognize our local groups. Um, okay, so I'm going to tag on a little bit to what Stephanie was talking about uh, concerning food as medicine. Um, you know, as the slide tells you there, you know, uh, food as medicine really sits at the crossroads of nutrition and healthcare. Uh, and as a community health center, we really look to how we can best provide services and reduce barriers for our local community. Um, and I'm sure that it's no surprise to all of you that we are facing a global uh, epidemic of diet related chronic disease um, and nutrition related health conditions, things like obesity, type two diabetes, hypertension rates, These these are all on the rise, particularly in rural communities and those communities with um, a lower socioeconomic level. Uh, in fact, at Waterfall, which again, we are a community health center, of all the patients that we have screened over the years for uh, social health barriers, nearly 50% have reported that they've struggled with access to food. And of those 50%, nearly 80% had a recognizable condition that would benefit from more fruits and vegetables in their diets. Now we found that with the rising cost of food, expensive produce is the last thing that people are gonna put in their carts. Uh, they are going to fill their carts with more shelf stable foods that can fill the belly um, and can be stretched further. Oftentimes these include foods that are very starchy, salty, fatty. Uh, and so the, the amount of produce that people are, are using their benefits to, um, to purchase is very, very small. Um, there's just not much at all. So, you know, what's interesting is that there's a little bit of a catch 22, right? Because um, many of the people needing fresh produce to help combat nutrition and related conditions are unable to afford fresh, fresh produce, which then makes their condition worse, right? So it's this, um, it's this circling the drain uh, catch 22 situation. So we decided at Waterfall to try and address this issue with a food as medicine perspective. And the thinking is that if we help to reduce a patient's barriers to obtaining fresh produce, then maybe we will start to see some of those nutrition related conditions reduce over time. So initially in 2019, uh, my team looked at traditional VeggieRx programs where food vouchers to supermarkets um, would be prescribed to patients by their primary care provider. For us, we found that this method presented a few problems um, for our patients. Um, some of those problems included barriers such as uh, uh, a perceived judgment and shame about, about the patient's socioeconomic status or the wait time um, for a referral from a primary care provider, as well as actually in particular, transportation issues, right? In order to utilize those vouchers, they would need transportation to get to those supermarkets. So we figured that the best way that we could reduce those barriers was to provide fresh 
fruits and vegetables in-house without the necessity of referral. So the only criteria for for people to participate in the Waterfall VeggieRx program is that they be a Waterfall patient in some capacity. And next slide, please. So um, we, we came up with the pharmacy, spelled with an F, um, concept, where um, we partnered with South Coast Food Share uh, to um, to create in-house storage for patients when they're here for appointments or if they come on a designated day to take home a bag of produce. So we actually have three pharmacy locations. Uh, the first is at our main clinic in North Bend. The second is at our school-based health center up on the Marshfield campus in Coos Bay. And the third is a small pharmacy in our North Bay elementary clinic elementary school clinic. Um, next slide, please. So um, some of the other things that we do other than just providing information or providing produce to our patients is providing information, um, partnering with OSU Extension um, to, uh, to hand out recipe cards. Um, currently tonight, actually it's interesting, you talked about the plan shop save classes. There's one happening tonight as we speak um, at one of our centers at our Starfish Center. So those partnerships are incredibly important uh, for getting the word out and um, creating opportunities for patients to um, fill their fill their bellies with with produce. Um, so again, we there is one of our uh, uh, our ads. So currently, um, Patients can get produce when they're here for an appointment, but we also have designated days that we have volunteers that are helping us hand out produce. Um, so on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays between nine and two, uh, we have produce, avail produce available as well as on Fridays between 12 and four. Patients can come uh, once a week or if they need more, they're welcome to. Again, there is no judgment. Um, the only criteria is that the person be a waterfall patient in some capacity. Um, each time that uh, they come, each time a person comes, they take home a fresh bag of produce, uh, and each bag is valued at approximately forty to fifty dollars. So we're not talking about a little lunch sack of produce; we're talking about a fairly large bag of produce to help feed um, uh, their household for for part of the week. Uh, next slide, please. Um, some of the other partnerships that we've been involved with include our attempts to create a more farm to table atmosphere as well. So we've partnered with um, our CCO, Advanced Health, to create a greenhouse and garden space. So last year we provided up to 50 pounds, 50 or 60 pounds of produce to the VeggieRx program from plants that we grew. So just just trying to keep that connection to, you know, you don't have to buy it all. Um, you can grow it and you can eat it and it's good for you and it tastes good. Um, and so we're really happy that we're going to be continuing on with that program this year. Um, just to give you some numbers, uh, we provide produce to approximately 85 to 90 households per week. Okay, so in 2022, we have served over 600 households, households since the beginning of the year. So just to kind of give you, give you, you know, a little bit of perspective of how many community members are benefiting from fresh produce. So the hope, Stephanie, is that the, the information that we learned in the, um, the health improvement plan, where only, I can't remember your, what your numbers were, something like, 5%, 15% of people were getting their fresh produce. Hopefully the next time that we check, that will change because the impact that uh, VeggieRx has had on our community is huge. And what's also really cool is that it's spreading to other clinics. So this idea of food as medicine, um, we are sharing our template. Uh, and so Bay Clinic is starting to do this as well. Coast Community Health has talked about um, 
providing fresh produce down in the Port Orford area. So I would love to see the south coast of, of Oregon be the food as medicine um, focal point for Oregon. It would be great. So thank you for letting me talk a little bit about our VeggieRx program. Uh, if you are interested in learning more or being a participant, all you have to do is call the main number at Waterfall. Anyone can help you get connected. And I believe that there's a slide at the very end that has my contact information. So thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, I have everybody's bio slides at the end of the presentation, so we can email this out to people afterwards if anybody wants the, the entire presentation. All right, thank you so much, Nicole. And now we're moving on to Tammy Ailey. Um, Tammy Ailey has been part of the Coos Bay community since she married North Bend local Sam Ailey 15 years ago. Tammy has worked for many years as a licensed massage therapist, as a secretary for South Coast ESD in the special education department, as a facilitator for the STEP program at ORCA, and most re recently as a community engagement specialist for the local North Bend, Coos Bay, and Lakeside Public Libraries. Most importantly, I must say. Um, Tammy is an advocate for people who are experiencing challenges and believes no one should go through trials alone. And with that, it's all yours, Tammy. Hey, thank you, Paul. Um, everybody, there's so much good information out there, and I'm here just to briefly share with you some tips and tricks on how to save money, how to grocery shop on a budget. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Paul. Uh, I do want to add that both the Coos Bay and the North Bend Library, both libraries, had the Fresh Market program, and I encourage you to go to the library and look on their counter and see if you fall within the income guidelines, because it's like 300% above poverty level, and most people, if you have children in the home, you can get this great benefit where you can get a voucher and take it to food share every week. You just get a new voucher every week. So I encourage you to go to the local North Bend and Coos Bay Library and talk to somebody about the fresh tourist market and get your voucher. Paul's waiting for you. Also, foodhero.org is an amazing website. It's one of my favorites and you can go there and literally you're like, I've got five ingredients. What can I make? It's great. So when we start to think about grocery shopping, I want you to start thinking about it as a creative, fun uh, way for you to get things, to get the fun of getting stuff without spending a lot of money. And I think this is one of the most important things is that when you shift your mindset to keeping yourself within a budget as being fun, uh, it becomes a whole new experience. So what I have on this slide is the average weekly grocery budget for a family of four in 2022 uh, is listed here. And the USDA uh, is saying a family of four is two adults and two children between the ages of two to 11. And you can see here, this is weekly. Moderate cost is over $200 a week is a moderate cost. Now, as our children get older, they tend to eat more. So we have to kind of keep this in perspective. Now, approximately, and Starla can let me know if this is on or not, um, approximately what is received for a family of four who has SNAP is approximately $200 a week. So this is really pretty tight. Everybody's done grocery shopping and I don't know about you, but I have watched it skyrocket in the last year. I'm spending about $75 more a week on the same groceries. And so it's really made me kind of rethink how it is that I can save money because I like to spend money where I want to spend it and I don't want to spend it on groceries. I have other things I want to spend my money on. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Paul. So when you go grocery shopping, you want to go with a list. And Stephanie, I'm going to ask you to post the grocery list to the chat. So I want you to go with a plan. You have to be fed. You have to make sure you have food in your stomach before you go, because everyone knows you spend more money when you're hungry. So go grab a cheese stick, grab an applesauce, eat it on your way down there, and grocery shop with food in your stomach. Try to go without children if you can, if you can't. It's okay. 
give your children activities to do. Uh, make it a treasure hunt. I want you to find this color. I want you to find this food. Let's pick the best price. Work on numbers. All that kind of stuff to keep them occupied. I am a fan of coupons. However, coupons normally um, in the Oregonian is where you're going to find them the most on the Sunday Oregonian. But I find that coupons a lot of times are for processed foods. So when I coup when I use coupons, I use the stuff that's for toiletries because I don't want to spend full price on toilet paper, full price on my toothpaste, full price on anything. So I use coupons mostly for toiletries. However, if you sign up for the Fred Meyer and the Safeway app and you sign up for their special services, then you'll get coupons in the mail based on what it is that you purchase. Uh, Safeway is great. They have reward points. They have free items in the store. You earn, you earn your gas reward points. You receive an annual birthday treat. That's pretty cool. There's a free item every month. So that's at Safeway. And what I think is great about that is that it's a local store that has, if you download their app, you can use coupons right on their app. The same thing is for Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer has reward points. You get free, there's a free produce bin at Fred Meyer, uh, at least the one in Coos Bay where you can get a free produce. While you shop, you can eat a little tangerine or you can munch on an apple. So there's free produce bin and they have personalized deals and coupons that are sent to you in the mail. It's um, gonna be texted to you and the just for you um, in the Fred Meyers app. And they really track what it is that you purchase and then they send you coupons based on what you purchase. So you can also earn gas reward points and these are really great. But what I like to do um, is I like to shop rock bottom prices with my local store coupons. So Stephanie, if you can post the rock bottom price list. And I'm going to have Stephanie post this to the chat and you can click on it. You can find, find these links at the Coos Bay Library website. But what's great about rock bottom prices, and I'm going to open this up so I can look at it, is that these are the prices that I've been tracking these for about 10 years now. And I've been noticing that prices kind of fall at a rock bottom about every 10 to 12 weeks. So if you look at the rock bottom price list, I know that when chicken goes on sale, a whole fryer chicken goes on sale for 99 cents a pound, I know I'm going to buy about three of them and two are going to go in my freezer. I'm getting them for about $4 each and my family can eat for two days off of a fryer chicken. So I know that when these whole foods go on sale, I know what the rock bottom price is. And I know that that's when I'm going to buy it. I don't buy grapes until they go on sale. Now, some people don't mind. And if it's a priority to you to spend uh, $2.95 on a pound of grapes, equaling out to be over $10 for your grapes, you need to do that and just recognize this is your money and you're choosing where it goes to. I buy grapes in bulk when they go down to 98 cents a pound. And I love it when that happens. So I shop every week in my grocery store at looking at what the rock bottom price is on my fruits and my vegetables. So then I fill my cart up with things that are not expensive. It may not be the type of apple that I want, but we have apples. And so what this is, let me go back to my Zoom here. So what this is, is just a way to save money at the grocery store is I make a grocery list, I look at the store ad and I notice the rock bottom prices. And then I use the store app to save money on whatever it is that I'm purchasing. Sometimes this means I have to hold off on maybe an impulse item because I know it's not at a rock bottom price, but there's some kind of reward when I leave the grocery store and I haven't spent as much money as I thought I was going to need to spend. And that's a really good feeling. And that's kind of that treasure hunting. If any of you are like thrift store shoppers and you come away with a treasure and it feels really good, that's the feeling that you get when you start shopping at the grocery store strategically. 
and you start paying attention and being mindful about what it is that you're buying and where your money's going and shopping these rock bottom prices and using all of these things at your disposal so you can save the most money. And I think that's the end of my slide, Paul. Is that all I got? That's it. If you have any questions, you can find me at the Coos Bay, North End, and Lakeside Libraries. Thanks, Tammy. That was great. Okay. What, what about the Art of Frugal Living? Oh, Stephanie, will you post the Art of Frugal Living booklet? Thank you. Uh, the Art of Frugal Living booklet is a booklet that I made when I was among the working poor, which I think we all still are with the rising cost of everything. And it was a way that I survived uh, with a family of six and having no money for groceries and um, really trying to learn how to save money on every area of my life so I could feel like I was living a successful life and still having things for holidays and such, but not spending as much money. So that book is also at the Coos Bay Library website and it's posted in the chat. Thanks, Tammy. And with that, uh, I think we're going to open up for a Q&A. If anybody has um, any questions, feel free to unmute or put it in chat and we'll field your questions. We have went over a lot, so. Well, we did have one question that was submitted to Stephanie in regards to how could one be a um, retail distributor for SNAP or a WIC vendor. I'm going to drop the links into those applications and uh, the sites that you would go to to apply uh, to be a vendor in SNAP or a WIC vendor. So those will be in the chat. Great. Thanks, Darla. Any other questions? Oh, here's one. Let's see. Let's see. So Jill said, I had a question about the double vegetable bucks for SNAP. There were no participating grocery stores in these counties when I searched. Does anybody want to field that SNAP question? I will look for a link real quick to where you can find them. Thank you, Starla. Uh, Adam may have something. Adam, any ideas on that one? Are we talking about double up food bucks? Yes. Yeah, yes. so double up food bucks. Um, there, there's really not a lot of actual grocery stores that are redeemable at right now. I think it's about 12 throughout the state. It's a pilot that we're trying to expand. Um, so that might be why you're not able to find one in your area. Most of them, I think there's three or four in Portland that are participating and a couple, that most of them are unfortunately along the I-5 corridor right now. Adam, don't we, have them, don't we have them at the farmer's markets? Aren't they using them there? Yes, yes, they are at farmer's markets. Um, th that's, you know, where it originated at was farmer's markets. Not every farmer's market participates. You'll want to double check before you go there um, expecting to get some double bucks, but most do. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's just like a, you get a little token or actually it's a card. Um, they're in $2 increments and you go that and go get more vegetables. Thanks, Adam. Oh no, Kathleen said the retailer application for the SNAP link is broken. Well, thanks for letting us know, Kathleen. Let me snag it real quick or try again. <laughs> Any other questions? If, if nobody has a question right now, I might share a couple. Um, oh, wait, what's this? A couple related things here. Um, so um, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Paul Addis. I'm a reference librarian at the Coos Bay Public Library. And I was just going to mention our library of things. It's a great way to... Um, try cooking utensils before you buy them. And um, we have a lot of stuff that you could try to um, change your, your eating habits. Like you could try a spiralizer to um, use vegetables as noodles, as opposed to um, pasta, and, you know, higher carb options. We also have a canning kit, instant pot, air fryer, um, 
We, have, we also have other food items like dehydrators and a bread maker. Um, all these things can be found um, on the library catalog by putting library of things in as a title. Um, I also want to mention that we have a monthly um, cooking program we do with the co-op and Jamar Ruff, who's on the screen here or was earlier. And I also want to mention that right now we're offering a limited number of vouchers each month, um, starting a week before the event. We meet every fourth Thursday. So there is an opportunity to get free ingredients um, to make these healthy meals with us. And then um, I did have a slide from Jamar too. Starla, did you say Jamar's gone? Yeah, he's at a, a city council meeting. Um, and so Jamar crammed a bunch of things in this slide. I haven't really looked at it um, that closely. <laughs> oh, wait, I lost it. But there's, there's a lot of information here about the co-op. There's some more about community cooking um, and about their cooperative principles. The co-op's great um, about working with local organizations to promote um, health and just um, local entrepreneurship, I guess I would say. Um, I also received some slides from the Brookings Harbor um, Community Kitchen. So um, here's some info on um, their kitchen and when that's available, that's in um, Curry County in the Brookings Harbor area at the end of um, <laughs> the southern end of the Oregon coast. Um, and it looks like they also have drop-in hours, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8.30 to noon. Um, where they offer the following things. I don't know if anybody's here from St. Tim's or if this kitchen, if they want to add anything. I did see that they are here. Yeah, I'm uh, Father Bernie and I'm the priest here at St. Timothy's and then we have Deacon Linda with us and Deacon Cora. And uh, yeah, we most definitely uh, have we, we provide four meals a week here at uh, St. Timothy's, and then there are the other meals at the other churches that was on the list there. But uh, one of our partners is Courtney there with South Coast Food Share, and today we got uh, delivery of food, in fact, and a lot of that has to is uh, produce. And um, today, the amount that we had was more than a pickup truck loaded in the in the back of the bed full. We had to have two vehicles to haul away all of the food that Courtney provided for us. So thank you, Courtney. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney, for all the food <laughs> she provides in our counties. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bernie. I appreciate that. I think I went through all the, yeah, and then there's just file slides. Does anybody else have any uh, questions for anybody on the panel or just general questions about food access in our area? I did want to let people know that I dropped the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, food and nutrition links for Coos and Curry into the chat. In both counties, we have, um, the, these are focus areas and we invite people to join. Uh, we need people to join to talk about what's next. Uh, this is obviously an overview um, of what is available. There is so much more available in Coos and Curry. Um, and so your voice is needed at the food and nutrition meetings in both counties. So if you like this topic and want to be part of the solution, please come join us. We meet monthly. So we are at the end of our time. We uh, want to let everyone know that we're going to be sending out a survey to each of the registrants and have questions and opportunity for you to share back. Um, and we're going to look at what's next. Uh, when we first started this about six, seven weeks ago, we thought we want a second annual South Coast Food Town Hall. And, uh, and so tonight, you know, we, we got a taste of what's out there, but we'd like to continue this conversation. So if you would like to, um, if you would like to be part of the next town hall, we would, we invite you come join us. I want to thank everybody, uh, from Advanced Health with the, uh, uh, Spanish translator, we, we had some difficulty with that, but uh, they were so generous and kind. Everybody that's here, Adam, we, our local SNAP Ed people couldn't join us tonight and uh, Adam jumped in in their place and, and what a treat. You know, my, my presentation was SNAP only how to get it, but um, I could not have done what Adam did for us tonight. So thank you so much for, for jumping in a couple of weeks ago. Um, everyone else, uh, hands, you know, to everybody. Thank you so, so much for, 
for helping put this on. First annual, second annual going to come. So jump on. Yes, muchas gracias, Celia. And thank you, Barb Young, for yes. uh, ASL interpretation as well. Barb, you did such a great job keeping up with us. And I'm a fast talker. You did great. <laughs> Uh, well, if there's no more questions, we're going to go ahead and, and let everyone go for this evening and uh, look forward to seeing you in a food and nutrition meeting soon, uh, as well as getting responses back from the survey so that we can answer additional questions and let you know other opportunities to, to be part of the solution in regards to food. It is so important to our mental health and our physical health. And so uh, we, this is just the beginning. This is a seed. Uh, that we want to see nurtured and grow into fruition. I love what Nicole said about let the South Coast be uh, the, the example of how food can impact one's health. Food is our medicine. So I, I love that. Good night, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. All right, thank you.